those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace among those with whom he is well pleased. Isn't that a great passage? We're celebrating Christmas at Forward Church, and we started a brand new series last week, which we called Unwrapping Christmas, finding the real meaning in our most celebrated holiday. And what I'm doing every Sunday is I'm unwrapping. How many of you guys are excited for this present? Yeah, I am. So every Sunday we're unwrapping a brand new principle that we're going to be learning about today in church that God's Word is going to be teaching us. And I'm so pumped because uh, my wife did a, a great job um, wrapping this box. It's by no means my job. In case you guys thought I was multi-talented, I'm not. Only good at a few things. And I'm going to unwrap this and inside of here, there's going to be our topic. You guys excited? Awesome. So let's do it. So let me get this unwrapped. And by the way, I think um, I need to keep this wrapper. So somebody last Sunday took it from me. I think it was Vitaly, but it's okay. Um, he, was, <laughs> he was doing this. And, and I'll give this to you, my brother, but please don't throw it away because Victoria needs this back. Okay? Okay. Oh, you did. I know, but somebody threw it away. It's okay. <laughs> so you're going to stand here. No problem. So... <laughs> So I'm going to unwrap this. I don't know how you guys unwrap your presents, but I just go for it. I don't care for all the pleasantries. I just want what's mine. Okay. Sorry. There we go. There we go. Okay. Vitaly will be using this wrapping paper for his family. So no problem. Tolker family, my pleasure to serve you. Um, and let's see what's in this box. Oh my goodness. Wow. What is this? I'm so pumped right now. It's like Christmas morning. Let's see what's going on in here. Ooh, there's multiple gifts. Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow. This is, this is Mickey Mouse ears. By the way, I'm not putting this on because you will never take me seriously as your pastor after you've seen me in these, okay? So I'm going to just leave them as my prop right here. Okay? Let's see. Let's keep going. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Keys. Very nice. Okay, cool. Brand new car. Everybody gets one. I'm just kidding. Um, let me put these here. What else is here? Ooh, look at this. What is this? A passport. Really cool. Okay, and it's not expired. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And wow, what is this? It's a credit card. Cool. Let's give a round of applause for Vitaly. Great job, brother. So guys, check this out. And I mean, honestly, these are really cool gifts. And one thing in particular, like this credit card, man, it can sure buy a lot of Christmas presents. Um, did you know there's actually credit cards that people have that have no limit on them? <laughs> Wouldn't we all want one of those, right? Um, so my question I want to ask you guys is, and I, wanna, I want it to be a little bit interactive, what do you think the Mickey Mouse ears 
the keys, the passport, and the credit card, what do they all have in common? Yell it out. What, what is it? What do you think? Fun, Fun Disneyland. What else? Traveling. Traveling. What else? Vacation. Yes. What else? Now, let me, let me, let me ask you guys a question. Um, all the stuff you mentioned is very, very accurate. I'm going to say this, that all of that stuff, traveling and vacation and all this stuff, this is fun, right? It's, it's something that we're very, very happy about. In fact, I'd be willing to say that these items bring us joy. Wouldn't you agree? So this is actually my topic today. I want to talk to you guys not just about any ordinary joy. I want to talk to you about joy that lasts. Okay? That's what's most important. Now, these incredible Mickey Mouse ears, I want to tell you guys what happened. Last year was the first time I ever went to Disneyland after living in California for over 12 years. Yes, that's me. 15 minutes away and one time in 12 years. And when, I, when we did Disneyland, we did it from the morning to the night. And what's so incredible, and I had no idea this was going to happen to me. As we are done with Disneyland, it's about 1130 at night, and we're walking out of it. I thought there would just be a simple exit sign, and you're out, and you're done spending money. But no, because after Disneyland, there's another Disneyland, which is a place where they sell everything Mickey-related. And after 13 hours of hanging with Mickey Mouse, how can you not buy everything in the stores? You would, it would be sinful not to. And so we're walking, Victoria's like, oh my goodness, this teapot, I just rode in it, and now I can do my devotionals and put my coffee in it. Oh, Bogdan, please, can we get it? And what does a husband say to his wife? Yes, of course, no problem. And as we kept going from store to store to store, even somebody who's not a big fan like myself, I was enamored by everything that was there. I suddenly wanted a hoodie, a Disneyland hoodie. I've never wanted one before, but they're so cool. And so what happens is, but then you spend all your money, and then you wake up the next morning, and the joy is gone. And where these Mickey Mouse ears are, they're at the bottom barrel of the closet somewhere, right? Maybe some of you guys displayed on your table, you're super a fan like that, but most people, they just kind of put the stuff away. The hoodie, nobody's ever wearing it again. People are washing their cars with it, drying their cars with it. The, the, the joy has been gone. The joy was elusive. We wanted joy that lasts, but it didn't. We go on a trip. We use our passport if we go international trip and we're, we're, we're waiting and we're hoping and we're praying for this incredible vacation and we post about it on Instagram and on Facebook and we're like saying 20 more days and counting and you have a counter and you have alerts that tell you that and the morning of and you're excited and you're pumped and then vacation starts winding down and you're like two more days and back to reality and one more day and then you're back to reality. And then you put your passport back in that place where you're not going to take it out for a couple more years because you spent all your money on your Euro trip. <laughs> but you had so much joy at the moment. It was so palatable. You desired it so much. But now it's gone. It's not joy that lasts. It's good, but it doesn't last. And you take one of these things, and it's plastic, and some of these are metal, and it's almost like free money. It's like there's no overdraft to it. You just keep spending, and then you get a nice little love letter at the end of the month that says these two words that could not be more scarier, balance due. <laughs> but at the moment when you're swiping it, and you're in the store, and the, and the clerk is saying, oh my goodness, this dress you put on, or this jacket you put on, you look so incredible. It is so slimming for you. You look dashing. You look dapper. You are incredible. You are the hit of your community. And we say, I am, I am, I am. And you're in the dressing room and you're like, how can I not buy this? But it's over my budget. And Dave Ramsey told me to put envelopes in there. But cash is like, it's like, what am I doing with the card? You just slide it. Or sometimes you just tap. Or then you dip. You tap, you dip, you slide. 
It's so fun. And then balance due. And so the joy that we had, the pure joy, and, 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 and what happens is we're like balance due. And you wake up with your wife in the morning and you're like, wow, what did we do? And then you have nothing to eat for the next three months. What do these keys represent? They might represent a house, a condo, an apartment, a, a, a dwelling place in which you reside, whatever it is that might have a key on it, might not. Um, and the thing is, we're so happy when we get it. I see people posting on social media all the time. We got the keys to our first house. I don't know how you do it in SoCal, but you're blessed to, to share with us your, your secret. Um, or people are like, we got the keys to our apartment or to our condo that we're renting. Or we get a brand new car. And, and even though it might not be a new car and we're washing it, we're buffing it with that Disneyland sweater. And, and, and months and months after that goes by, the car gets scratched. Something happens. We say to our, to, our, to our people in our home, we say, you know what? This car, it is a rule. We don't eat in the car. We don't eat in the, this is a new car. I don't care if it's from 1998 and 300,000 miles. For me, it's a new car. I've always ridden a bicycle and a car is a car is a car. And you finally get it and you're like, no in and out in the car. And six months later, animal style fries are all over your seats. <laughs> and you don't even care. You don't even care. Now, what I'm trying to tell you, and don't worry, I'm going to get to the Bible. I just want to kind of get us prepped for what I'm about to say. Joy that lasts. These things are awesome. And guys, this Christmas season, buy presents if you have the money. Go to Disneyland, but give to the church first. Um, and, and, and go to Euro trips, and whatever, or maybe some across town trips if you can, whatever you want. But I want to tell you, we can find joy from these things, but not in them. So if I was to bet every single one of us came in here this morning with a thought and a desire, God, we want joy from Christmas, but it's so elusive. God, we wanted to wake up in the morning with our family and have hot chocolate and sit, and sit around the tree. And when we woke up in the morning, it was just a disaster in our home. God, I was thinking that my job is going to give me a really big bonus and a big commission check. And then when the direct deposit hit, your bank account did look like a phone number, but you had $9.11 in it. Some of you guys got that. Or we understand balance due so much that we can't go to any vacations in the next year. And so this joy is so elusive. How can we have joy that lasts? How can we be happy and joyous and, and be full of love and be full of life and be full of light during this Christmas season? You know, the Christmas story talks a lot about that. We read this incredible story where God becomes a human. He comes to humans to earth as a little baby boy to save us. The Bible says he was a human who came to make his home with us. Jesus Christ, the God-man, comes to be with us. And at the same time, this story is so incredible. But it, if you really challenged yourself, I bet you there was moments when you thought it was too good to be true. It's so amazing. God says, I will take away your sin and I will give you joy and I will give you hope and I will give you a life, not just an existence. And we say, yay, God, we want it all. But then we look at our life and we're like, God, how can I believe that you are good when my life is not? This is an absolutely incredible thought. But at the same time, it's so often too good to be true. Jesus, are you really that good? Jesus, can you really give me joy that lasts? That's the question we're talking about today. And I want to ask you, what makes Christmas so special? We look at this incredible text, the, the text of good news that, that is being delivered to us. And the first thing we see in this text is that there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. The first thing we see is that God sends the greatest message, the most transformative message that anybody will ever hear. He doesn't take the message to the White House. He doesn't take the message to the elite of society. He doesn't take the message to the Instagram influencers who have a million followers. He doesn't take the message to the most important people in the world. He takes the message to those that are marginalized, that are on the fringe of society, that are the outcasts, People that are least likely to receive the greatest message. God takes the message to them. 
God takes it to the ordinary. God takes it to the people who don't think their life is put together. In fact, they acknowledge that very often their life is falling apart. God goes to the marginalized. God goes to the oppressed. God goes to the weak. God goes to the people who don't think they're good enough, who don't think they deserve enough, who haven't thought that they achieved it. And God goes to them. And isn't that every one of us? We haven't achieved. We have failed God many times. We have sought joy in things that don't really give us lasting joy. But yet God decides to come to us. It's these shepherds. They're they're staying in, in fields nearby. And God is coming today to us, to ordinary people in Orange County. And He's telling us, I'm going to give you joy that lasts, joy that is permanent. Look what's happening to these shepherds. The Bible says they're keeping watch over their flocks by night. They were ordinary people just like you and I. But at the same time, they were consistent in the seemingly ordinary task of being shepherds. They were consistent in doing what they were called to do. I believe that very often you and me are looking for moments of incredible miracles or moments where we want a burning bush and God to come out of it or we want the lightning to strike from the sky or we want the sea to part and we're like saying God where are you and God is saying I'm in the seemingly inconspicuous lackluster moments of your life that I'm showing myself to you sometimes we're God is so close to us that we entirely miss him He's with us, God with us, Emmanuel. The Bible says God came here to make a home with us. The shepherds were faithful. They were keeping watch over their flocks at night. I always tell people, if you want a life of lasting joy, it's not complicated. Read your Bible, pray and ask God to forgive your sins, join a local church, and serve with all your might for all the rest of the days of your life. It's a simple formula, but it's, it sounds too good to be true. People say, no way. You think I'm going to start reading this and my life is going to change? Yes, it will. Read your Bible. Go to church. Give to a local church. Serve in the local church. Do that the rest of your life and you will be blessed and you'll have joy that lasts. Amen? Amen. 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 We can clap that up. And so... We need to be understanding that God calls us to follow him in the seemingly ordinary things in our life. And look what's the the great thing that is happening here is the, the, the shepherds were terrified, but the angel reassured them and says, don't be afraid. I think we need that reassurance today. I want you to think about the worst thing you're going through right now in your life, the thing that's causing you the most pain the thing that's causing you the most heartache, the thing that's causing loneliness and anxiety to you. And I want you to hear this. Don't be afraid. God is with you. God is in the midst of your trial. God is in the midst of your troubles. God is in the midst of the seemingly unending, dead-end situation that you're in. And God just wants you to be faithfully following Him because we are the people who do this. And God is saying, don't Be afraid. Don't be afraid. God is going to do miracles. God hears our prayer. God answers to a prayer. It's a joy that lasts. This past week, on Thursday, we had our gathering. It's such an incredible time when we spent together with our church family. You've got to get to the next one. It's going to be on December 20th. Don't miss it. And Thursday was just crazy rain in Orange County. It's very abnormal for us, but it was happening. And so you know what happens in Southern California when it rains? No one knows how to drive. (laughs) And on that particular day, I went to Costco. Bad idea. I told you before how much anxiety the parking lot causes me. But this time in Costco, there were so many people that backed their trucks into the entrance. It was a horrific traffic jam. And it was a bunch of flooding. But this is why I'm telling you this story. I got the food for the gathering. We had an amazing group of people show up who braved the rain. I even told everybody, hey, stay home. And you can't keep people away from God, my friends. Like, that's what's up. Okay, that's a different, different sermon. And we were, we were sitting in a group. And there's about 15 of us. And... We, we were praying, and I had a prayer, and, I, and, I, and we're sitting, and I, and I prayed, and I said, God, 
you know I've been meeting with a group of guys who live in, in the apartment complex where I live, and lately we haven't been meeting because their schedules have been all over the place. I, I said, God, please, in Jesus' name, cause a revival at the place where I live, and somehow, let's, God, please revive this group again. That's all I said. I said, in Jesus' name, amen. That was Thursday. Saturday, it's about noon, I go to my local grocery store, I'm, I'm, I, as I'm walking out of there, and with the busy holiday bustle, unfortunately, we sometimes forget that there's a world around us, so we have blinders on. We're like, okay, got the list, checking it twice, who's been naughty nice, okay, I got everything, I got to get the cash register, got to tap my card, tap, swipe, dip, and I'm out. And as I'm walking, I, I literally almost like bump into my neighbor who's part of that group. And he's there with his wife. It's like almost like God's telling me, dude, open your eyes. You might have sight, but you don't have vision. I'm literally bumping people into you. And so immediately I'm like, oh, oh hey, how's it going? Absolutely. I'm like, okay, where's my church cards? Where's my Christmas invitation? And he's like, hey, man, how's it going? I was like, oh, it's going awesome, man. Merry Christmas. Yeah, everything's cool. Everything's great. Inside of my mind, I'm like, oh, my gosh, so much I still have to do. And he's like, Oh, man, I'm so glad to see you. I'm like, dude, yeah, I'm glad to see you too. And inside of my mind, I'm thinking back to Thursday. I'm like, no way, God, no way, no way. And this is what he says to me. He said, hey, man, are you guys still meeting on Wednesday? I'm like, well, we haven't been meeting for a while just because everybody's schedule has been like completely out of, the, um, out of whack. And I'm like, but we can start again. And he's like, let me see here. He's like, yeah, I have family coming over this week. And I'm like, oh, great. Excuses, family. I'm like, fine, God, revival maybe next year or two years from now. And then he says, and then he looks at his wife and she's like, no, babe, we're not even that busy. And he looks back at me. He's like, he's like, how about we meet Wednesday? I really want to meet. <laughs> Praise God. I'm like, what? I'm like, I didn't even check my calendar. I didn't even check with Victoria. I'm like, Wednesday night sounds good. Yeah. I'm like, yep, see you there with my Bible in hand. Why am I telling you guys this? I, I, I'm, I'm sure that if you think of the last few weeks, you personally have had many interactions like this where God is answering your prayers. So in the moment when you feel God is not working or when you feel your message is not being heard, don't be afraid. Amen? Don't be afraid. Praise God. Don't be afraid. God's got you. And so this is a passage that I believe is talking about joy that Last people need Jesus in Christmas season. People are open to hearing about Jesus. Who is it on your mind that needs to hear about the good news? Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this verse because it's so incredibly important. The Bible here says that the angel brings good news. It's not bad news. It's not overwhelming news. It's not stressful news, and it's certainly not sad news or fake news. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Um, This is good news. Praise God. This is good news. The angel is not trying to give you another to-do list. The angel is not trying to say, achieve more, do more, do this with God, and then he'll finally love me, love you. It's not bad news. It's not overwhelming news. It's not stressful news. It's not sad news. This is good news. There is no other news I desperately desire to hear today. I bet you your family also needs to hear good news. It's not bad news. It's not anxious-driven news. It's good news for you. Good news for you, for you, for you, for all. Amen. Praise God. I like clapping. This is good. Praise Jesus. So so this is good news. But I want you to pay attention to something else. Not only is it good news, it's not too good to be true because it really is true that God came to save you. But the Bible says he will bring great joy. Great joy. It's joy that lasts. It lasts past me leaving the happiest place on earth. The joy that will last even after I pay off this credit card. God help us all. Um, it, it's joy that, that even when the paint dries off on my car, I still find happiness in God. And even when my apartment is messy 
or it's not the way it should be, or it's not my dream home, I still find joy. Even if my passport has been sitting around for years because I have no money to afford a trip somewhere else, I still have joy. Because I can find happiness from the, these things, but it's not in them. And so what happens is, I'm, I'm going to go for a second. Okay, joy that lasts. We all want it. We all desire it. But before we get there, I want to tell you is this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I think some of the most greatest joy you and I can ever experience is when we give. God gave. You can give without loving, but you can never love without giving. And if you're filled with the love of Christ, you will want to give. You'll want to be generous with your time, your talent, your energy for the sake of other people. Because living for yourself is exhausting. And it is so liberating when you give yourself away. And God will fulfill any needs that you have. This is our standard. Now, Look, the Bible says God gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. What is joy though? Why do we get joy from that? How do we get joy that lasts? Well, I want to define joy, and I believe all of us define it differently because of the stuff that we like or the experiences we want. But, I, but joy, this is how I want to define it. And I believe it's, it's accurate. Isn't that kind of funny? I just define stuff that's accurate. It's okay, let's keep going. Joy is a noun, okay? It, is, it means extreme happiness related to an expectation of something, right? So you have joy. You're like, I'm going on this trip. I'm going to get this Christmas present. I'm going to get this promotion. I'm going to get married. My spouse is going to be a certain way. It's, it's happiness related to an expectation of something. God, something is going to come into my life, and I'm expecting joy. God, I'm expecting happiness. But there's two parts to joy. There's a permanent joy and there's a passing joy. Here's what I want to tell you. The Bible here is promising us permanent joy because you know what? I have my permanent joy. You can take my passing joy. My commission check is not as big as I wanted to. You can take my passing joy commission check because nobody can take my permanent joy. I'm not married yet and I want it to be. It's okay. You can take my passing joy because nobody can take my permanent joy. I'm not living in the house I wanted to. It's okay. You can take my passing joy, but you're not taking my permanent joy. Somebody didn't think I'm cool enough or didn't invite me or thinks I'm not good enough. It's okay. Okay, bro, you can take my passing joy because nobody can take my permanent joy. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So that's the difference. Our, our passing joys, we go on a trip and it's gone. Somebody says to us something that's rude and, and, and we're like, man, we're blowing up about it. And it's like the thing is, a lot of people over-sentimentalize the holidays because people think, oh my goodness, it's holidays, it's Christmas. What does that mean? A pretty tree hot chocolate around the tree, elves everywhere running around doing your work, and like stockings everywhere, and we think it's just like a Christmas movie. You know what I think the problem with you and I is? We've watched way too many Christmas movies, and we think Christmas is like Macaulay Culkin when he's getting into the white limo in New York City and the chauffeur is opening the door for him and he steps in there and he gets served a big pizza in the back of the limo. Unfortunately for many of us, Christmas is not a white limo with a pizza in the back. It's sometimes being in a family dinner and somebody triggers somebody and it's World War III. But you know what, my friends? You can take my passing joy. You can take my permanent joy. You can take my passing joy. You can defy me. You can criticize me. You don't have to love me. You can take my passing joy, but my permanent joy, ain't no one taking that. <laughs> Woo! So I want you, my friends, define for yourself. What is passing joy? What is permanent joy? Things are not going your way? That's okay, my friends. It's a passing joy. It's going to pass. If it doesn't matter in the next five minutes, it doesn't matter in the next five years. Stop dwelling on it. Stop thinking about it. Forgive the people that have wronged you. Forgive your family members. Forgive your brothers and sisters. Forgive your husband. Forgive your wife. She probably doesn't do anything wrong. But forgive. And, 
It's like, just live a life full of God, full of permanent joy. And even if Christmas is not going to be picture perfect, like they show on HGTV, it's okay. Because HGTV, you can take my passing joy, but you can't take my permanent joy. You can't. You can't. Because God is in me. He came to give me permanent joy, great joy. Joy. This is a, such a phenomenal passage it is in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. It says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. My permanent joy is the joy of the Lord. God, I am your child. You have created me for this purpose. My bank account doesn't define me. My zip code doesn't define me. How good I am as a, as a mother or a father doesn't define me. How effective I am as a pastor doesn't define me. How effective I am as a worship team member doesn't define me. None of those things define me. They're a part of my life. They don't define my life. Jesus does. It's Jesus, 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 Jesus. We often live in a moment of regret. We think, man, I could have done this differently so this person could have turned out differently. I shouldn't have said this and now this person's mad at me. Stop dwelling on the past. Live in the present. God is your strength. Nobody can take your permanent joy in Jesus Christ. No matter how much culture, holidays, or movies try to take it. By the way, you can watch as many Christmas movies as you want with your family, okay? It's no big deal. I have a list of eight that I'm going to watch. Um... But the point is, it's sometimes not like it is in the movies, and that's okay. It's better. It's better with Jesus. It's better. So, Nehemiah 10, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I love this particular passage and how it ends. It says, this is for all people. Guys, listen, it's not for some people. It's not for people who've achieved, or people who are really good, or people in this particular circle. Have you ever been in an environment where somebody didn't pick you? A sports team, a college didn't pick you. A high school rejected you. A coach rejected you. An employer said, you're not good enough. A spouse left you and said, I don't want to be with you anymore. We've all experienced the feeling of rejection and the feeling that wells up inside of our stomach and our heart. And God here is telling us this permanent, lasting joy is for all people. And I studied so hard in the Greek New Testament this whole week. And I realized this word all means all it means all for every person. I don't care what situation you're in today. Maybe you're far from God. Maybe you're close to God. Maybe you're just checking out God for the very first time. Maybe God hasn't yet changed your situation, but maybe he's changing you. Amen. And when he changes you, your situation looks totally different because you have sight and you have vision. This is for all people. But friends, I don't want us to forget. It's for me. It's for you. It's for our neighbors. It's for the people in our apartment complex. It's for your boss who you don't like. It's for your coworkers who are horrifically talking smack about you all the time. It is for all people. It is for your neighbor whose dog is constantly like doing weird stuff on your lawn. It's like for the, the neighbors that are parking in your spot all the time. It's for the neighbor who called the tow truck on you. It's for all people. Some of you are like, man, I can never bless him. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. So this is for all people. This is joy, joy, joy. That's why I love the song. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. To what? To stay. You can have my pass and joy, world. You can have my pass and joy. The driver that cut me off when I'm on the four or five. You can have my pass and joy. The parent that took my last toy on the target aisle that I now I'm not going to get for my, parent, for my kids. You can have my pass and joy, parent. You can't take my permanent joy. It's the client who canceled on you right before Christmas, and that was the money you're going to use to pay your rent. You can have my pass and joy, client. I'm going to get 100 times more revenue from somebody else because God is not going to allow me just to decline. He's going to prosper me. You can have my pass and joy. You can have it. We can have it. So all of us in our life right now, we have people who are trying to take our past and joy. They can have it. Here you go. I'm going to wrap it in a gift and give it to you. A truck full of past and joy. Because you can't take my permanent joy. Jesus is in me. So my question is this, and I want to challenge us. 
Who are the people we must be joyous to in our life? As we wrap this up, I want to say, who is all the people? Who are the people that need to hear Jesus? My friends, this is good news of great joy for all people. For all people. It is a joy that lasts. And I want to finish with this. In the Gospel of John, the Bible says about Jesus, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. In the Old Testament, Moses called people to go to a tent of meeting and to be with him there to experience the presence of God. That tent of meeting was a home where God resided. In the New Testament, the God of the universe comes as a human, Jesus Christ, and the Bible says he made his home among us. We didn't go to the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting came to us. We didn't try to go home because if we did it on our own, we would never want to go home. Therefore, the home, which is Jesus, came to us and he came to dwell within us. That's the joy of the Lord. That's the permanent joy. That's the joy that nobody can ever take from us. Neither circumstances, nor people, nor a financial situation, nor a physical crisis. No one can take my permanent joy because my permanent joy is the joy of the Lord and His name is Jesus. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'd like us to stand. Jesus comes to us.